DNS, the domain naming service, provides host name to IP mapping. It is a vital network infrastructure service for local area networks, wide area networks and the internet. DNS provides a centralized hierarchical database of domains, computer names and services for each client on a local or wide area network or the internet. The majority of DNS servers on the internet are Unix and Linux servers implementing a version of this service known as BIND or Berkeley Internet Name Domain. The D in BIND also refers to daemon in some contextual situations. By utilizing DNS, computers on your network will be able to find each other by host name, and you may host your own internet domain on a Linux server on your local area network. Tonight we're on an Ubuntu 10.10 uh, Maverick Meerkat server, um, and I want to set up BIND DNS. And BIND is an acronym that stands for Berkeley Internet Name Domain System. And it is sort of, uh, it's what the majority of Unix and Linux systems on the internet uh, use. The bind implementation of DNS is, is you know, probably, again, the, the largest percentage of DNS servers out there. And the great thing is, is that it's open source and it's free. And if you have Ubuntu, you can install it and set it up. Now, remember, DNS maps a host name to an IP address. So that's what we will want to be doing. In a default installation, Ubuntu Linux is running Network Manager and is set up to lease IP addresses dynamically via DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. By default, when you install your Ubuntu, um, it's going to be set up to lease an IP dynamically over DHCP. And we can see here, I've leased 192.07.13.11 from the DHCP server on my router dynamically. What I want to do is change this from dynamic to static. Now don't get me wrong, dynamic is nice and it's convenient for a laptop or an iPhone or a portable internet device. And when you're changing networks and going back and forth, it would be a hassle. It would be inconvenient to try to reconfigure those network settings manually as you went from network to network. So for those things, DHCP is fine. Servers need to be static. But for a server, DHCP is bad. Why? Well, it's the weakest link in your, you know, it's, it's a single point of failure for vital mission critical services on your network if you allow them to depend on a dynamic IP address leased from a DHCP server. If the DHCP server goes down and they can't renew the lease, then they expire and all of a sudden your DNS server, your database server, your web server can't uh, provide services to hundreds or thousands of clients on your network. Even if the DHCP, per, uh, DHCP server stays up, what if it decides to give out the IP to something else with a different MAC address on the network? Or what if the lease expires for one reason or another and it can't be renewed? So you, you want to prevent that by configuring your servers with static IPs, um, you know, IP addresses that do not depend on a DHCP server. They're sort of pillars of your networking community, so to speak, and they must be accessible to all. So to configure this with a static IP, I need to realize when I do if config, this command up here, it'll show me the interfaces I have configured. Yours may be different. It may be ETH0, ETH1, ETH2, ETH3. I'm ETH2. If you're wireless, you'd see WLAN 0, WLAN 1. This is the loopback. But primarily, the only one I'm interested in is this one, the one that's configured with a dynamic IP address, so ETH2. <laughs> do is edit a configuration file like anything else. Um, so I'm going to go into uh, the etc folder and I'm just going to go ahead and open a file with nano. I want to use sudo because I need root privileges to save. And I'll use the absolute path um, and I want to open up this file called interfaces. Okay, And this is the default installation uh, of Ubuntu and this is what it would look like. There's nothing configured for any specific interface, and it's just set for the loopback. And what that'll do by default is it'll just automatically use Network Manager and run DHCP when you boot up your Ubuntu. So I want to change that. So instead of the loopback, I'm going to use the interface that's getting the dynamic IP. So in this case, for me, it's ETH2. For you, it might be something different. Use if config and check. I'm going to do ETH2 there. Here for loopback, it could be one of three things. It could be loopback. It could be DHCP, and it could be static. Okay. In this case, I want to do static. 
and I'm going to do an address here. And the address I'm going to configure it as, my network is 199.207.13. And I'm going to give it an IP address of 100 for my server. Okay. And I want to specify a few other things as well. If I'm going to do a, a static IP, I need a subnet mask. So net mask 255.255.255.0. And this is a class C network address. Okay, so we're doing IP version 4. Remember class A is 126, 127 is a loopback, 128 to 191 is class B, and 182 to 223 is class C. Well, for class C, I need three octets, all right, or 24 bits or three bytes as the network portion of my address. And there's one byte or eight bits as the host portion. Okay, um, I'm going to do network. And for network, I'm going to do 199, 207. 13 and it would simply be 0 or all the bits turned off and then in addition to network I'll do the the opposite of network which is the broadcast and that would be 199 207 13 and all the bits turned on or 255 and in addition to broadcast I'm going to do gateway and gateway would be 199.207.13.1 usually your gateway your router to different subnets to the internet is sort of the lowest IP by tradition it doesn't have to be but by tradition the lowest IP on the network okay with all of my settings configured and saved I want to go ahead and save this file so I'm going to do control X and I'm going to hit Y for yes I'm going to hit enter and okay and so now my, my interface says file has been saved now before we you know restart our networking services and configure with this address you'll I want you to see two more things um, first off I'm going to cat um, resolve.conf and now if I do that this is actually the IP address of a name server a DNS server that was added in by network manager automatically over DHCP so eventually I want to change that change that to match the address of my DNS server when I get it set up uh, via bind And the other thing I'd like you to see is look at your host's file in the ETC folder. Now I've already taken the entries out of mine, but what you'll notice if you have the default installation with Network Manager, there'll be a, like another IP address up here. It'll be like your dynamic IP, whatever you've leased. And then you know your static IP could be down here, any other IP that you've assigned to your host. And that creates an error or a problem in the sense that you'll have you know two different IP addresses for the same host name. And that's sort of a, a bug in Network Manager. So you're going to want to uninstall Network Manager. And we're going to do that in just a minute. But in this file, you'll want to make sure that you clean it up if you need to. Just take a look at it, cat it. If you need to, nano and clean it up and make sure that all you want to have when we're done is 127.0.1.1 pointing to Pegasus, the loopback, and 127.0.0.1, which would again be Pegasus, localhost, local domain. Okay. And this is IP version 6 stuff down here. We don't need, we're just kind of basically going to be working with IP version 4 right now but you can leave all of that in there if you want just make sure up at the top you get rid of the network manager garbage or stuff that it added uh, for the dynamic IP address um, otherwise again if you know if you get your DNS server working and you reboot and you have network manager installed it's going to dynamically write to the host file again whenever it gets uh, out over DHCP and that's going to foul up your DNS server service so it may be working and then you'll reboot and it won't work anymore and that would be it that you didn't uninstall so it's just easier if we get rid of network manager and you know we can always reinstall it later right okay so we want to do that now I changed the network configuration file I went to a static IP so to complete that change I need to do sudo ETC, remember whenever you modify uh, init D, a, a configuration file, you've got to you know, restart the service that uses it and networking. And I'm just going to do restart, pass in the restart command. And as long as you don't get any error messages, everything's okay, you should be good to go. If you do get error messages, simply hit the up arrow and try it again. And you should be fine as long as you get an okay. So I'm going to verify this. I'm going to do if config. And now here's my static IP. Remember, I was 11, now I'm 100. So there's my static IP address. So we haven't even got to setting up bind yet, but we're getting closer to you know, finishing as far as preparing our system to install bind.